our first act tonight, our own Flint local historian. We're actually very lucky to have him. This man does a lot of research. He actually gives a crap about the place that he lives, this amazing, cursed earth that we live on called Flint. I love it. I wouldn't want to, I have lived everywhere else, well, a lot of other places else, but yeah, whatever. Gary Flynn, our uh, local gem and historian treasurer, take the mic. Thank you, Mike. And as you look to, I do give a damn about this town. And uh, I'm now working on my third book. Uh, which will be titled Lost Flint. So I'm doing research. I've been writing some sli little scissor slivers, I should say, uh, that I uh, am inspired to write or come up with. Uh, and I'm going to do a sliver uh, in just a moment. But first, uh, I, as part of my research, I'm rereading a book that uh, Andy Highsmith wrote uh, called Demolition means progress. And uh, he was uh, at, a, at a, a, a book signing and presentation, and I have a signed copy of the book from him. I'll let uh, Jenny zoom in on the page. Yeah. And give her a close up of the cover, too. Okay. Okay. And now I'll read a little sliver of a draft of a portion of uh, the book uh, where I talk about lost media. And I'll talk about four significant radio stations that are not anymore, at least not in the form that it became famous for. So I'll do the four radio stations uh, in the order that they first went on the air. Flint's pioneering radio station was WFDF, which first went on the air in 1922 as WEAA and changed its call letters to the initials of the station's founder, Frank D. Fallon, in 1925. I gave the full story of this pioneering radio station in my first book, Remembering Flint, Michigan. In 2002, the station's owner at that time, Cumulus Media, received an offer from the ABC Inc. unit of the Walt Disney Company that it could not refuse and WFDF was sold for $3 million. It became the Southeast Michigan outlet for Radio Disney and increased the station's range by buying another station near Toledo, Ohio and taking it off the air in order to expand its signal and move the station to the Detroit area with the city license moved to the Detroit suburb of Farmington Hills. But then in 2014, Radio Disney changed its focus to streaming audio via the internet and sold most of the stations, including WFDF. Currently owned by Adele Broadcasting and based in the Detroit suburb of Southfield, the station can still be received in Flint and has an urban talk format calling itself the 910 AM Superstation. The second radio station to go on the air in Flint became the station that brought rock and roll music to Flint. WTAC, the Big 600, first went on the year in 1946, co-founded by George W. Trendle, creator of The Lone Ranger, oh. and H. Allen Campbell. The original callers were WTCB, standing for Trendle Campbell Broadcasting. The company briefly operated a TV station in 1953-54, which failed. WTAC-TV on Channel 16. In 1956, the station brought rock and roll to Flint with a Top 40 format that served the station for decades until the rise of FM radio that led to the station's decline by the end of the 1970s. It changed the form, its format to country music in 1980, but that was not successful. The station's last hurrah came when it was sold and evolved into a talking oldie station saying, We Tack is back. One of the talk shows developed a, host, a following hosted by Estelle Kaufman, wife of co-owner Dr. Benjamin Kaufman, and mother-in-law of co-owner, former radio newscaster, attorney, and future Genesee County prosecutor David Layton. Called Estelle and Friends, it was very funny, interesting, and a bit offbeat. She played songs from the 1940s and 50s between guests. But competition for a standalone AM station is tough with FM stations receiving higher ratings. In 1989, the station was sold and adopted a Christian format, eventually changing its callers to WSNL. 
The real estate, the station's four tower array was located in Grand Blank Township on Center Road, south of Hill Road, became very valuable. So in 2003, the land was sold and three of the four towers were taken down. The station operated at reduced power with the remaining tower, while a new four tower array was built in Gaines Township next to the old Berlin and Farrell Toxic Waste Site. When the new transmitting facilities became operational, the remaining tower went down and the Grand Blank site is today the Cambridge Park condominium development. The Flint Board of Education put FM radio station WFBE on the air on October 5, 1953. It provided in-school educational programs for students in the Flint schools. One of the programs WFBE produced won the Governor George Foster Peabody Award in 1970. The following year, WFBE began to receive funding for the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, allowing the station to broadcast from 6 <coughs> a.m. to midnight. The station, during most of its existence as a public radio station, operated from studios and offices in the lower level of Flint Central High School. Unlike most educational radio, uh, radio stations, WFB operated on a commercial frequency at 95.1 MHz. Over time, the station was able, through fundraising, to upgrade its facilities. In the late 1970s, it began broadcasting in stereo, then increased its power. It eventually increased its effective radiator power to the maximum allowed. But the Flint School's financial problems led to the Flint Board of Education selling WFBE to a commercial operator for $7 million in 1997. It became a country music station, which it still is today, which it still is today calling itself Nash FM. WWCK-FM began broadcasting in 1964 as WMRP-FM, the sister station of WMRP-AM-1570, which is now WWCK-AM. 105-FM, 105.5-FM, was originally owned by Methodist Radio Parish with a, with a religious and middle-of-the-road music format. The two stations simulcasted until new regulations led to separate programming. The FM station then played Top 40 music. But when the FM station began broadcasting in stereo, the engineer had trouble modifying the master control console, so the stereo signal was turned off when music was not played, and the stereo signal was turned down when the music resumed. The station was sold in 1971 when the United Methodist Church withdrew its support. The new owners changed the callers of both stations. While the AM station had different calls over the years, the FM station's WWCK be, be, remained constant. It originally had top 40 music during the day and a rock music format at night. In 1975, the station was sold and the FM station switched to an album-oriented rock format full-time. The station, uh, let's see, after a couple of years of tweaking the format, it developed into a ratings powerhouse enjoying high ratings for several years and becoming widely noticed nationally. One program, Buffalo Dick's Radio Ranch, went into national syndication. On Sunday mornings, Michael Moore of future Roger and Me fame hosted Radio Free Flint. But competition on both sides of the musical spectrum cut into ratings in the late 1980s when WIOG's top music format and cars won weight with adult contemporary music. So in 1988, the station was sold and new owners switched to top 40 music as CK 105.5. Despite protests from listeners, the station garnered higher ratings, but the national prof profile was gone. A documentary released on the internet gave the story of 105 FM, Lynn's Best Rock. And you can go on Google to find out where it is so you can see it for yourself. I've also uh, uh, wrote something about uh, Channel 28, uh, which was Flint's PBS station until it went off the air last year permanently, uh -huh. and the, the Flint Journal, which stopped being a daily paper, wound up being uh, four issues a week paper. Uh, but due to time limitations, uh, I'll stop right here. And uh, thank you. I thank you very much. I love it. I love it. I love it. That's great. You know, if you want to know the truth about a thing, go to its source, okay? And this man's digging deeper than anybody else I've ever met to understand, you know, the pieces as to why things are the way they are now. And that, that's important, okay?